what's up you guys, The Curious Owl here, and today I am going to be sharing with you guys my May wrap up. turn out to be the most productive of months in terms of reading, but I still got through quite a bit of what I wanted to, so I'm still proud of what I did. I had a little bit of setback here and there uh, due to some books that just took me way too long to read, but nonetheless, I am proud of what I got through. I'm proud of the fact that I was able to get something read during this month, so I can't be too unhappy with how that went. So without further ado, let's get into these stats for May's wrap up. So in the month of May, I did complete eight things and I am in the process of continuing another book that's basically going to go into June. It's not going to count for Battle of the Bookish or anything but it is something I'm going to have to carry over because I did start it here at the end of the month. But in total with all of the finished books I had for this month I read 2,196 pages and listened to zero minutes worth of audiobooks. Six of the books I read were physical and two were ebook. I had no audiobooks specifically for this month and seven of the books I read were from my personal library and one book was borrowed from my local library. In terms of the star ratings for the month, I had actually a really good reading month for the most part. I had four books out of the eight that were five stars, two were four stars, one three star, and one two star. I had no one stars and no DNFs this month, which was pretty surprising considering that there was a couple where I probably really could have just given up completely. The first book I completed this month was Everlasting Nora by Marie Miranda Cruz. This is a middle grade story and was one of my Wheel of D20 picks for the pick of a viewer recommendation and it focuses on a young girl in the Philippines who essentially is dealing with her father's death that happened months prior and dealing with a very absent mother who has a gambling addiction and the story goes where her mother then goes all of a sudden missing and she's trying to figure out where exactly her mother is and they're actually living in the oldest cemetery in the Philippines because they have no money to actually afford a home and so there's a lot talking about in terms of the fact that there's a whole community of people that are actually living in the cemeteries like there's this own kind of uh, camaraderie within that and the issues that surround you know being impoverished in the Philippines and how that really affects an 11 year old girl. I really enjoyed this. I gave it a five out of five stars. From beginning to end I was completely hooked. I honestly felt so awful for this main character and all the things that she had gone through but I really love the message that this story gives which is basically about hope and it is about you know sticking to your guns and also in some ways you know relying on your community because sometimes there's people in your community that are going to help you through the darkest of times even if your own family can't sometimes help you in the ways that you need it. I just think that this was a really great thing for me to read during Asian Heritage Month which was in May and it was a great way to start off the month by reading something that was for one outside of my own country outside of my own culture and two to really understand a very specific aspect of the Philippine culture that was brought into the story which is about the idea of death and dying and dealing with things in an impoverished kind of perspective. And I really just enjoyed learning about that so much to the point where I am going to be pushing this on a lot of people who are looking for middle grade recommendations. The next book I completed was Haikyuu Volume 1 by Haruchi Furudate. This is, like I said, the first volume in a manga. This was for my Wheel of D20 pick for my mom's pick, and I loved this as well. I gave it five out of five stars. It was so stinking cute, and I have in my Wheel of D20 vlog more in-depth thoughts about this and Everlasting Nora if you would like to check it out, but to be completely honest with this, I, I need this whole series. I, I need this entire series because I got to relive a part of my life that I didn't necessarily shun away from when I was growing up, but a part that I just kind of seemed to have grown out of and I actually dearly miss in a lot of ways for the sentimentality that I had within it. Not so much the people I was involved with when playing volleyball when I was a kid, but I, I really miss playing and I miss learning and I miss being able to, you know, be in games and be in tournaments and stuff like that. So I got to relive a little bit of my younger days through this. If you don't know what this is about, this is a manga series about two young boys who are fresh into high school and they join up the same team 
for the same high school, but the year prior, you find out that they were opposing players on different teams, and they basically have this rivalry, and when they come to high school for the same team to play for the same team, they have to figure out how to work together despite despising each other to the very core, and so it's very fun. It's very angsty in a lot of ways, which I really appreciate, but I, again, I just really feel like I connected so much on the whole volleyball playing aspect, like the fact that it's centered around that it, it just kind of brought back these very fond memories that I have about playing volleyball. The next thing I completed which was probably the thing that took me the longest amount of time to read in the entire month of May was The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan. This is book five in the Wheel of Time series and I do have a dedicated review for this you can go check out but short sweet and to the point I gave this two stars. I found this very boring. I feel like that this is the slowest book that there is so far in the Wheel of Time series and I just feel like I've reached a bit of a rut with it to where it's getting harder for me to want to get through these books. There's not nearly as much action in this one. There's really not a lot for me to go on with like there was in some of the earlier books. So I am hopeful that when it comes to reading the next book, maybe that changes. I did hear that there was a few books kind of in this middle portion of the series that seemed to fare worse than the rest of them. So I think I just am in that kind of middle book syndrome-esque era of The Wheel of Time. So that's why I'm continuing with the series as opposed to giving up on it entirely just because I understand that this is a very long-winded series and there are going to be quite a few books in the middle that just aren't going to live up to what I have expected based on the books prior. So this just unfortunately was not one of my favorites. This was another kind of disappointing read for me and that was The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman finally completing an entire series read that I had been doing of the Practical Magic series by Alice Hoffman. If any of you guys know anything about me, Practical Magic has has always been one of my most favorite movies of all time and it was an adaptation off of a book by Alice Hoffman called Practical Magic and when I had read Practical Magic I was very sorely disappointed in the fact that the book was so much worse than the movie and I feel that the movie had done the book a huge service in terms of really grasping people's emotions more than the book did and unfortunately this sequel which just was released here at the end of 2021 doesn't really live up to what the story I had envisioned going forward is because for one the movie changes a lot in terms of the ending of the story the ending of the curse of the Owens women the books basically had their own storyline that I believe Alice had intentionally wanted and somehow somewhere along the way in the process of making the movie practical magic everything was thrown out the window and everything was changed and so whether or not I want to necessarily knock Alice for changing essentially what was the ending in the movie. I don't think that that's fair. I think that by itself this way of dealing with the Owens curse by itself was really awesome to see. I just don't think that overall the construction of the story was my forte. I feel like that this focused way too much on Sally as a person whereas I feel like most of that should have been reserved for the book Practical Magic as the movie really focused on Sally and Jillian individually and I feel like this one should have been more focused on Sally's daughters because each of the books in the timeline of this series has been focusing on the specific women of the generation. So first of all you had Magic Lessons that had Maria and her daughter Faith, then Rules of Magic focused on Jet and Franny and Vincent, their brother, and then Practical Magic should have solely focused on Sally and Jillian, and I feel that the Book of Magic should have solely focused on Antonia and Kylie, who are Sally's daughters, but that was not how it was done, and I feel that that has been the biggest problem for me with this one and Practical Magic in particular, because I feel that they just really had a lot of opportunities missed, a lot of things that could have been done that weren't, and it just led to an overall massive disappointment for me. So I did give this three stars. I think there was a lot of good things to come from it, but it just did not hit the mark in a lot of ways that I was wanting it to. Next thing I picked up was a short story out of the Arcanum Unbounded collection by Brandon Sanderson. The story I picked up was The Eleventh Metal, which is the prequel to the Mistborn Era 1 trilogy. Now this is basically a short story that is placed after Kelsier is released from the pits of Hathson, which in the Mistborn story you you learn is basically where he was sent to work until his death essentially in terms of bringing out this metal called Atium which was being used in Allomancy. You learn that he's joined up with this other person who is looking to basically
basically free a bunch of ska who are being tortured and being you know used as slavery and basically the story is then also learning of what's called this 11th metal which is this mysterious metal that nobody really knows anything about and Kelsier mentions it a little bit in the first book of Mistborn where it's something that nobody's really ever heard of that it's very highly sought after because it's supposed to be this mythic element that's going to change everything in terms of warfare and allomancy in general but here in that short story you get a little bit of an inkling as to what that is. I read this and really enjoyed I think Kelsier's perspective the most out of everything because I loved seeing his perspective in Mistborn by itself but I did feel like that there was something I was kind of wanting to see that didn't end up showing up in this and that had to do with the information regarding the 11th medal, I feel that with this very short 20-ish page story, we didn't really get to see much of what it is. We didn't get to really understand much of what it could be. And I think that that's because in book three, which I'm currently working on, The Hero of Ages, we learn a lot more of what that's supposed to be. And so they couldn't really go too far into it in this prequel in terms of what this 11th medal is because it's kind of reserved for the final book. But it's kind of the first inkling we see of Kelsey you're learning what the 11th medal is that I think then drives forward this idea of it in the first book. So I it wasn't like that earth shattering that it wasn't there. I just kind of had wished that it was there a little bit more just to give us a little more context into how he learns about it and all these things and how exactly he moves forward with the information he has. It just didn't live up to that. But I still gave it a four out of five stars because it was a very fun read. It was very short and quick paced. And I also just love, again, reading from Kelsier's perspective. I've really enjoyed what I've read of him throughout this series. The next thing I read was another short story. This one was called Darkness Under the Sun by Dean Koontz. This is actually another prequel to, I believe, a standalone novel. I thought originally it was a series, but as far as I'm aware now, it is only one book, but basically this is a prequel story to a crime novel by Dean Koontz that focuses on a serial killer, and specifically this story talks about how he went from killing children by themselves to then killing full on families. And that's all I'm going to say about it because I kind of want that to be the only thing people know going into this. I loved this so much and I've never read a Dean Koontz story in my life. This was the first Dean Koontz piece I had ever read and it was captivating. It was twisty. It was just kind of like unsettling to the point of I have to know how the rest of this goes because I cannot read this and not understand more of this serial killer. Like the way that it was constructed was just very fascinating and on top of it seeing a lot of things from the young boy's perspective that we see in this just it blew my mind. And I was so excited to be able to read the standalone eventually that I just was like I have to get it like as soon as humanly possible. So gave this a five out of five stars. It was super effective. It was quick to read. It was very fun. Again for something that was my first read of an author this was probably the best impression I could have asked for and I hope that that continues because I've heard many times from people including my father-in-law that because I love Stephen King's writing a lot and a lot of the work he's done that I would really enjoy Dean Coon so I'm hoping that that is the case and I will end up enjoying the majority of Dean's work as well as what I've read of Stevens. Next short story I read was The Witch of Duva by Lee Bardugo. This is a short story in the Grishaverse and deals more specifically with a kind of myth that there is in this town where there's this witch who supposedly will steal young girls and nobody knows where they go, nobody knows what happens to them. But one woman in this town catches the eye of a widower who has a daughter and a son and the daughter is who we see the perspective of and her name is Nadia. Nadia is not a big fan of the woman that her father ends up falling in love with and marrying because she thinks that this woman is who is stealing away these children. She's mysterious. It seems like she's got this very kind of of ethereal and magical hold on her father that she doesn't trust her and so she runs out away from home and decides to shack up basically with this woman who is a witch and learns of her trade, learns that she's very good at magic and the story is her basically trying to figure out who she is and what she wants to do with her life and is she even willing to go back home? Does she want to stay in a place where she feels unwelcomed or does she want to be somewhere that is completely away from her family but offers her a brand new life kind of thing and I really enjoyed it. The twist at the end was really surprising because I did not expect 
the things to be brought up that were brought up like I can't say anything without really like spoiling it but the end of this really caught me by surprise and I was shocked and like I actually had to go back and reread the very end of this because I had to make sure that I didn't miss anything because I was so caught off guard that I felt like I completely missed something which I think that's a really interesting twist kind of thing to happen like I like when twists do that where I have to go back and reread what I read because I feel like I missed something and that tells me that the the author really just makes it so that you're so comfortable with how you're reading it that when all of a sudden a new thing comes in that alters the entire story and you're left kind of back on your heels it, it's just that's one of the most satisfying things I think a writer can ever do because that's always the goal is especially in these kinds of twisty kinds of stories needless to say I gave this a five out of five stars too purely for that ending because for such a short story to really give the kind of impact that it gave and really discuss a lot of things about you know grief and kind of finding your place in the world and kind of having this mysterious thing in the background that you're not really aware of too much and you're not sure how it plays into everything it was just spectacular and the final thing i completed this month was <sighs> sword of destiny by andre sepkowski the second collection of stories for the witcher i loved this so much this was so amazing i felt that this honestly really showcased to me how truly linear the stories in the last wish were because the stories in this were much more linear in the fact that you could kind of see the fact that there was time that had passed between each of the stories but it also really exemplified the fact that the things that we learned in the last wish specifically about yennefer really play into effect here i was just mesmerized by how seamlessly each of these stories from the last wish and sword of destiny seem to like work and without even what seems like trying the stories all connect and they all make sense and it doesn't feel like i missed out on a lot of information because even though these stories were basically snapshots of Geralt and his adventures, they all tie together very well to where you can very easily construct context and understand enough about the characters and how they interact with each other and what exactly the kind of history is between them to where like you can just read these by themselves and like feel like you've read one book in terms of like an entire character's background and then going into the actual Witcher series you have enough of a basis to where it's going to be so easy for me to understand what the heck's going on with these characters and who they are and the relationships they've built so like this was just an amazing collection of stories that I think couldn't have been done any other way without feeling as amazing as it does like it's very rare I find a collection of stories that's that sit so well with each other in addition to an entire other book of stories like I don't think I've ever read something of this caliber and I'm very excited to continue with the Witcher series when I get the chance to because I'm hooked. I am completely hooked and I cannot wait to see what else this series has to offer. With that being said, those are all of the books I completed in the month of May. I am very proud of myself, especially because I was able to complete books for Bookopolathon. The three short stories I read were all within the span of the Bookopolathon weekend, and I was very proud of the fact I could do that. And I'm just very impressed with what I was able to do, despite having a very long overdrawn kind of experience reading a couple books so I'm just very proud of the fact that I even managed to complete some books because it very easily could have gone a different way. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this video if you guys did enjoy it please do give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already and you'd like to be and would like to see more content like this go ahead and hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owlette in our flock and I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys!